Welcome to the More Love Connection podcast. This is your host, Jannard D. Moore. Before we start the show, we officially want to invite you to become a Patreon for the More Love Connection podcast. If you don't know what Patreon is, Patreon is just a way to support your favorite podcasters or content creators. For just as little as $1 a month, you can officially support the More Love Connection podcast. If you're interested, we'd love to have you as an official More Love Nation supporter. So go over to www.patreon.com forward slash MLCXN. Again, that's www.patreon.com forward slash MLCXN. If you become an official supporter, you'll get access to behind the scenes content. You'll get access to guests. You'll be able to know who the guests are before we even announce on social media and a plethora of other things. So think about becoming a More Love Connection podcast supporter. We'd be honored to have you as an official supporter. Again, that's www.patreon.com forward slash MLCXN. For just as low as $1 a month, you can officially support the podcast. Now, let's jump right over to the episode. All right, More Love Nation, we are back with another More Love Connection podcast, and y'all can see my my headphones just fell out (laughs) the back of my shirt, Uh, but we are here with another More Love Connection podcast, and we have a very, very special guest on. This guest was actually on an episode that we did a year ago, so I'm excited to have her back on the show. Uh, As I stated in the intro, uh, the pre-roll, if you want to become a member of the More Love Nation please go over to patreon.com forward slash MLCXN to become an official member of the More Love Nation tribe. Uh, also, make sure you go over to our social media. Follow us on Instagram at More Love CXN. Also, follow us on Twitter at More Love CXN. Go over to our Facebook page and follow us at More Love Connection. And we are now on YouTube because you are watching this and you're looking at it. So if you have not, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, give us some shares, uh, share this with your friends and family. Uh, We have a lot of great stuff coming up from the More Love Connection podcast. But with that, I want to jump right over to the episode. So we're going to take a quick More Love Connection podcast commercial break. Y'all know I like throwing them commercials in there because I work so hard on editing them. So y'all got to see them. But go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll be right back with you with more of the More Love Connection podcast. Hey, what's going on, More Love Nation? We'd like for you to check out the official merchandise for the More Love Connection podcast. Simply head over to Instagram, search at More Love CXN, and click on our bio, and you can hit View Shop. You can purchase merchandise directly from Instagram, or you can go over to our website, www.morelovecxn.com forward slash merch. Check out the official merchandise for the More Love Connection podcast. Check the show notes if you want to click from the podcast episode. All right. So as I said in the intro, man, this guest that we had uh, on our podcast She's back. She was amazing on the last podcast. We got a lot of great feedback uh, from that episode. Uh, You can look down in the show notes. I will link the the previous episode that she was on. Uh, But I want to go ahead and bring my friend on, Miss Maisie Robinson. Uh, Maisie, welcome to the More Love Connection podcast. How are you? I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me again. I am so honored to be here, and I love the intro. <laughs> I, I don't. Maybe you had that last time, but I don't. I don't remember it, and I love it. That is fabulous. I love that. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. And so, if you all didn't catch the last episode, uh, Maisie is the founder of Cultivate Atlanta. Cultivate Atlanta is a community of women just encouraging one another. Uh, you do group therapy with at Cultivate. Um, what else do you all do in Cultivate? 
Yes, we, we provide individual therapy, couples therapy, and group therapy here in the Atlanta area. Um, we serve adult women on basically anything an adult woman would walk through through the adult lifespan. Depression, anxiety, uh, self-worth, self-esteem issues, relationship concerns, grief, loss, divorce recovery, life stage transitions, midlife transition, motherhood transition. Just our, our heart is to serve women throughout that adult adult lifespan. We also um, hold gatherings, which due to COVID over the past <laughs> year have been online like yeah. the rest of our lives. And at our gatherings, we have guest speakers, we have storytellers who share chapters, if you will, from their stories and what they are learning from their own story. Our gatherings are always centered around a theme such as anxiety or what do you need to say yes to in your life or healthy relationships. Um, but yes, our heart is to just encourage women to cultivate joy, courage, and freedom in their lives as they pursue emotional and spiritual health. Wow. And so for all of our More Love Nation listeners, what I tell, what I like to tell our listeners to do, Maisie, is go and spam, you know, our guests. Don't don't send them no crazy emails or nothing like that. But go over to their <laughs> social media. Go on Instagram and follow uh, Maisie at Cultivate Atlanta. You can see it linked down below. Also, check out the website, www.cultivate. Was it cultivateatlanta.com, correct? Yes, thank yeah. you. That's yeah. correct. All right. And so I'm excited to have Maisie on because she has an amazing online course that she has developed, you know, in addition to the great Cultivate Atlanta and all the great things that they're doing. She has an online course called Uncomplicating Love. And what this online course is, is geared towards is it's designed to equip and encourage uh, anybody. I know it's geared for women, but, you know, on their website, it says it's for all of us, uh, but it's to encourage you in your journey, loving yourself and others from a place of health, wholeness, and freedom. We all need that right now, Maisie. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Each class includes two video lessons, a downloadable workbook with notes and takeaways, uh, journal prompts, reflection questions. So go over to www.cultivateatlanta.com forward slash uncomplicating love and get this Maisie enjoyed the podcast so much she loved it she said that more love nation you all get five dollars off of the course so use the code more m-o-o-r-e for five dollars off of uh, the uncomplicating love so let's just jump right on into it what's yeah. uncomplicating love Maisie? yes great question so this is something you know i've been a therapist for a number of years now um 15 years which is kind of crazy. And uh, obviously I talk a lot about relationships with clients. And then particularly during COVID, it's been interesting. And, and perhaps you've seen this. It's been interesting how COVID has impacted our relationships. And a lot of people are reporting and talking about increased relationship stress and tension and even broken relationships. You know, you aren't speaking to family members anymore. You, you aren't speaking to friends anymore. COVID has just really kind of lit COVID plus all that we have experienced over the past year in our social political environment has just lit up relationships in not always the, the most positive way. And right. so relationships and love, I think for a lot of people feel really complicated right now. You know, I, I don't know how to talk to that person. I can't believe they think the way they do. I can't believe they're making the choices they're making. I just, I've, I'm, I'm done with them. And I think that's often our instinct is to just like throw our hands up and walk away from love and connection. Mm -hmm. But the truth about love and connection is that we're wired for love. We're wired for connection. We are wired to love and, and be loved. But that doesn't mean that love is easy. It doesn't mean that love um, doesn't have its, its own stressors that come with it. But love doesn't have to be complicated. And one of the things that I have seen in my work with clients, but quite honestly, in my own life and in my own personal growth work, is that when we begin to live from a place of love, when we begin to live from the truth that I am loved, I was born loved uh, because I was born and created by a good, loving God. 
Uh-huh. I was born loved. I was born worthy of love and belonging. And nothing can change that. Someone getting mad at me, uh, failing at something, making a mistake at something, um, saying the wrong thing, nothing can change that. And when we live loved, when we live from the from the place of truth that I am loved, it really changes how we interact with people. It, it changes our relationships. Obviously, we begin to love ourselves. And so that is life changing in of itself. Right. But it also changes our relationships. We're no longer looking to people to give us love and approval. Um, we're no longer, it's easier for us to be vulnerable in relationship because we can ask for help because we realize, oh, you know what? I'm worthy of receiving love. I don't have to try to earn your love. I don't have to do 10 things for you before I ask for one thing from you. Right. Um, I think when we love ourselves, when we live from that truth that we're loved, it's easier for us to know how to navigate difficult relationships, how to set boundaries, you know, because mm-hmm. boundaries, the purpose of a boundary is to protect our worth and well being. And if we don't think we're worthy, we don't think there's anything to protect. And so right. you can keep lying to me. You can keep betraying me. You can keep walking all over me because I don't think there's anything to protect. And I think also more importantly, or most importantly, when we live from this from this truth that we are loved, we then begin to heal those love wounds. You know, we begin to heal those wounds um, from childhood or earlier in life when someone chose not to love us or someone left us or someone couldn't love us the way that we needed to be loved. And and we can then find freedom and healing and and move forward from those wounded places. So uncomplicating love, the course is about learning to live from this place of love, from this truth of love. Uh, and, And then how that creates a ripple effect. Like I said, We can practice vulnerability. We know how to deal with difficult people. We know how to heal from previous loved ones. And we step into that freedom of love and what love was intended to be in our lives, which uh, it's supposed to be a gift, not a stress point. (laughs) Well, something that you said, uh, and you said a lot of great stuff, but one of the word, like the key words that, that stuck out to me was just the vulnerability. Yeah. And I think, you know, it takes a lot of strength to be vulnerable with somebody and that, that could be the first step to, for whoever the relationship is with, you know, saying, Hey, I'm going to be vulnerable and I'm going to choose to take the step to uncomplicate these, these issues that we have. And one of the things that, you know, cause the last time you were on the show, like, I think it was right. I think it was April, but it was right around the time where we were getting those mandates to, we were at the beginning of, you know, lockdown. And so, you know, a lot of individuals were forced to face certain situations that they had never had to face before, you know, with parents being at home with their kids full time, you know, and being at home with their spouse and both spouses are working from home, Mm -hmm. you know, and and just that environment, it can create complications. Like you can have those, you know, complicated situations. You you run into stuff like, you know, we normally wouldn't deal with this. Uh, But, you know, even one of the, the, with vulnerability, you know, I feel like last year made therapy normal. We normalized going to talk to somebody. We normalized saying, hey, I'm feeling like this and, you know, I need to talk with somebody. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even what you're saying with the childhood trauma, you know, that's like normalized to go and talk to a therapy and let's let's Mm -hmm. figure out why you're feeling this way. Let's let's get to the root of the issue. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you have seen, you know, from your professional experience? you know, experience and, you know, being a therapist? Oh, yes, absolutely. And and again, this is one of those other things that's fascinating, the ripple effect of COVID, you know, how this respiratory disorder has just impacted every facet of our society. And it has most definitely impacted the mental health world, our mental health, but also the mental health profession, because COVID was, COVID has been, I I shouldn't speak of it in past tense because we're technically still in it, although (laughs) yay for vaccines, but, um, you know, COVID impacted us in ways that we only ever saw in sci-fi movies. You know, never in your life did you ever think you wouldn't really be able to leave your house or go hang out with friends. Like you went to a movie and paid $13 to to watch people do that. That wasn't going to be your life. Right. Not me. (laughs) Not not me. 
And so that social isolation, I think also the fear of we're dealing with this uh, kind of faceless enemy that seems to impact people differently. And am I going to be the one who's in the hospital or am I going to be the one that's just going to have a fever for a day? You know, and so just the fears, the anxiety, the loss of certainty and stability, how it impacted our relationships and people that you love and are close to you making different choices than you, you know, that, like we said, that causes tension. And so, yes, people have been uh, coming to therapy, which is a wonderful thing. And I'm, you know, I'm not necessarily like a big, like, let's look for the silver lining. But I think if there can be a sil- one silver lining from COVID is that therapy has become normalized because, and this is the dark side of that silver lining, I think people began to struggle so much that they could no longer, den- they could no longer white knuckle life. Right. And, and realizing, you know, I, there's an, I, I often say this to people, like, there there's no extra points for being miserable. Like, you're not going to get a better seat <laughs> if you're miserable going yeah, through yeah. this. And so realizing I can reach out to somebody, I can be vulnerable. Like you said, I can have the strength to be vulnerable and to admit I am really struggling right now. I'm struggling with negative thoughts, dark thoughts. I'm struggling with loneliness and, mm-hmm. and beginning to reach out. I think also because everything had to go online, therapy became more accessible for people. Yeah. Um, I know for myself, you know, I am now seeing clients who don't necessarily live in the metro Atlanta area, which is where my practice is located. I'm seeing people, you know, who are outside of that, you know, an hour or right. so outside of Atlanta. And that never would have happened prior to COVID because I didn't offer video counseling. Right. And so, yes, I think just normalizing, increasing the access has been has been good. And I think it's also, you know, the the sad reality of that is that people are struggling and people are still struggling. And so just giving people as much access to therapy, mental health resources, emotional health resources, I think is still really important right now. And I, I, one of the things that, you know, I, I was, I was never the one to say, Oh, I had, you know, anxiety or just being anxious, but I feel like as a, as a nation collectively, we all have, officially suffered from mm-hmm. anxiety, mm-hmm. you know, and, and whether one wants to admit that or not, we all have suffered those anxious feelings of what's next, yeah. because literally for every single person, this was, un, you know, we're, we're charting on uncharted waters here. We don't know what, what, what's going on. We don't know what's going to happen. And, you know, and even with, let's just take, you know, married couples or individuals who are, you know, forced to be confined in a space for, you know, the duration of the the pandemic and quarantine, Mm -hmm. you know, and again, it's just like, yes, we are married, we see each other, but now it's, we're together 24 seven. Yeah. And, and so, you know, some individuals don't know how to handle those anxious feelings. Some, some individuals, you know, recluse and go into and internalize everything and they don't, they don't want to speak about stuff or, you know, and I, I know people who, have hey i'm trying to talk to you hey what's going on what's going on but you have one person that's like i don't want to talk about it mm-hmm. this this is this is my coping mechanisms and you know for one spouse they can take that as oh are you shutting me out you're shutting mm-hmm. me down mm-hmm. and that comes to play with now you're com- complicating the relationship mm-hmm. and so you know just trying to figure out though that situation like how do we get back to normal mm-hmm. in this how do i how do i love myself Mm-hmm. So I can love you, you mm-hmm. know, and I like what you're doing with uncomplicating love, I think is very much needed. I feel like the nation, we just need a decompression period mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we yes. need a real decompression period. I ag- I agree. And I think, you know, probably other people might say there are different roots, but I do think a root of our like, just high level of just tension and angst is, is our anxiety. We Mm -hmm. are afraid. And I think there are, there are a lot of things to be afraid of right now. You know, there's just a lot of scary stuff going on. Um, There, there's a lot of scary things being said, Uh, Mm -hmm. you know, like the anxiety isn't like, we're not cuckoo because we're feeling 
anxiety. And this is one of the things that I have said to people throughout this year, like you are feeling anxious because this is an anxiety inducing situation. Your anxiety is actually a healthy response to Mm -hmm. this situation. If you were not feeling anxious, that would tell me that you were numb and completely disconnected from reality. So actually your anxiety is a sign that you're awake and you're paying attention and your brain is responding as it should to scary events. But Mm -hmm. I think, you know, to what you were saying about how it impacts relationships and we've been with each other nonstop, you know, that's that's a lot. That's That's a lot. A lot lot of quality time. That's a lot, yeah. Um, Is that anxiety is what I like to think of as a vulnerable emotion, it makes us feel vulnerable. It makes us feel exposed. It makes us feel out of control. And so what a lot of us do, like you said, when we're feeling anxious, you know, some of us withdraw, we just kind of go into a shell and that's how we armor up against anxiety. Like I'm just going to withdraw. I'm going to put up my wall. You can't get to me and I'm going to control my environment by withdrawing from my environment. But for other people, and really I think a lot of us, we armor up against our anxiety by lashing out, by mm. being impatient, by being angry, by snapping, by right. just being harsh. And I think that that is what a lot of, I mean, that I have done that. <laughs> like, right. I, mean, I could bring my husband in and be like, yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> sure. yeah. Right. You know? um, and I think that a lot of us have done that both in our romantic relationships, family relationships, friendships, relationships. And I think that is the part of the source of some conflict that we've seen in this past year in our relationships is that we're anxious and we don't know how to sit in that anxiety, process that anxiety, vulnerably share that anxiety. Instead, we're just going to armor up and I'm going to snap at you and I'm going to lash out at you and I'm going to cut you off. Mm-hmm. You know, Cause that's, I'm going to feel empowered. I can control that, you know, but right. it, it complicates love. It makes, it makes things worse. Not right. It's not helpful. Right, man. This is, this is a good conversation. Um, and I feel like, again, like I said, what you're doing with, you know, the online course and just kind of, kind of guiding individuals to say, Hey, let's look at this from this perspective or, you know, uh, I feel like it's, like I said, it's really, really needed. Um, and I am, I, again, I'm, Everybody has. We have PTSD. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. we look. We really have PTSD. And mm-hmm. like you said, this this our environment, our society. You know, the news. It is anxiety inducing because mm-hmm. you know, especially for a period of time, it was just like, oh my god, what's on CNN? What's on MSNBC? Mm-hmm. And, and it's like you can't escape notifications. You can't escape this stuff. And so you're constantly being fed. Mm-hmm. again anxiety inducing information mm-hmm. you know and like you said where the individuals want to say they suffer from it we mm-hmm. we all suffer from it mm-hmm. we all suffer from it um so if you can what's one tip on how to uncomplicate love just for millennials and relationships or any individuals what's one tip that you have to uncomplicate love yes oh that's a, that's a good question <laughs> i think if I could give one tip, but then I'm going to give another one. So I'm going to cheat okay. a, little <laughs> a little bit. I do feel like the one general tip to uncomplicating love is to begin to live from this truth that I am loved mm-hmm. and, and to receive, to receive that love that, you know, from my belief and my <clears throat> standpoint to receive that love that comes from, from above, I am fearfully mm-hmm. and wonderfully made. I was born loved to receive that love so that I can love myself. You know, there's the old saying that hurt people, hurt people and loved people, love people. Right. And, and so when I can live from that place that I am loved, I'm loved and that's separate from anything I do or what anyone thinks of me. That's really going to change how I interact with you. I'm going to have more grace and patience for you. Um, But again, I'm going to know where to set boundaries when Uh something is really not acceptable. Um, Uh I'm not going to feel the need to punish you because I'm not internally punishing and beating up myself. Um, I'm going to be able to grieve the things that hurt me rather than trying to hurt you in return. I'm going to be able to uh, know when I need to ask for help. I'm going to be able to stop over-functioning in my relationships and then feeling resentful 
when someone doesn't do the same in return. Wow. And so it is that plate, it, it is that aspect of I am going to live loved. And then here's the second part that uh, that is underneath that is that mm-hmm. living loved requires a, a good amount of self-awareness. Um, you know, we have to sit with ourselves and go, okay, why, why am I feeling resentful right now? Mm-hmm. Oh, because I've done these 10 things. And I was just assuming because I did these 10 things, then you would know that, um, you know, you were going to Chick-fil-A and I would want a Chick-fil-A, but you didn't get me a Chick-fil-A, <laughs> so you must not love me. You know? Right. But, but, you know, it's like, well, did I did I ask him to get me a sandwich? Right, right. Why didn't I ask him to get me a sandwich? You know, it's that self-awareness of what am I feeling? What am I thinking? What am I needing in this moment? And am I communicating that? And if I'm not communicating that, then what's going on there? And when we live from the truth that we're loved, all of that becomes clearer for us because there's there's no self-judgment, self-criticism for the need, for the feeling, for the thought. And so it's that combination of living from the truth that I'm loved and what comes out of that, but also what undergirds that is this self-awareness. Amazing. This is an amazing conversation. But what I want to do is I want to just stop. Let's take a break really quick. Um, so we'll be right back with you with more of the More Love Connection podcast and Maisie Robinson talking about uncomplicating love uh, right after this commercial break. Hey, More Love Nation. If you all are enjoying this episode, stop what you're doing. Make sure you hit that like button. Also, go down into the comments if you're watching this on YouTube. Leave us a comment. If you're listening to this on your favorite podcasting platform, make sure you take a screenshot of you listening to the episode. Head over to your Instagram upload it to your IG stories and tag at more love CXN. Once we see the notification, we'll share it with our audience. Also make sure if you're listening on your favorite podcasting platform to leave a five star rating and a review reviews, help new listeners find the more love connection podcast. So stop what you're doing. Take the screenshot, leave a comment, just show some love. Another way that you can show us some love is by going to check out our website, go to www morelovecxn.com check out the merch tab we have some sweatshirts some hoodies go over and check out our merch tab also for low as one dollar a month you can become an official supporter of the more love connection podcast all you have to simply do is go to www.patreon.com forward slash mlcxn if you have not done so Make sure you subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube, share with your friends and your family. Again, that's the More Love Connection podcast. You know you like it. Go ahead and share it. Now, let's get right back to the episode. So we're back. Um, Maisie is talking about uncomplicating love. If you didn't catch the code in the beginning, go to www.cultivateatlanta.com forward slash uncomplicating love. I think uncomplicating dash level. I think that's it. You can yeah. also um, just tap, uh, go to the course tab on the okay. main page. Yeah. So if you go to the course tab on cultivate.com, cultivateatlanta.com, you can see the uncomplicating love. Um, so Maisie, again, we're talking about uncomplicating love. You've just shared a tip on, you know, one tip on how to uncomplicate love. Do you feel like, 2020 made individuals more self-aware and kind of lean in to what I like, what I don't like. I I think for a lot of people it did because 2020 in a lot of ways stripped us of so much. It stripped Mm -hmm. us of a lot of escape routes. You know, if, um, if I had a bad day at work, I can go to the gym and, and I can work out real hard and I can, I can just escape from the ruminating thoughts about how my boss annoyed me. Right. Um, if, if I had an irritating phone call, I can get in the carpool lane and just, you know, switch off and go into mom mode in the car. Right. Um, if I'm feeling down, I can just escape those feelings of being down and go out with friends at night. And, and we lost all those things. And those things mm-hmm. aren't necessarily bad, but, you know, busyness is, is an escape route from ourselves. And then all of a sudden we weren't busy. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. You know, also we, we had a lot of time on our hands. We had a lot of and, time, yeah. 
And so COVID, one of the things that I've said uh, throughout the years, COVID took a lot of, away from us, but it left us ourselves. Hmm. <laughs> you know, it, it left us us. And right. so for a lot of people, they really had no other option but to sit with themselves really for the first time. There was no escaping self. And so, you know, to, to I can keep having the same argue, argument with my spouse during quarantine or I can try something new. And before I snap at my my spouse, I can go, well, what's going on really with me? You know, we were fine. We finally had these opportunities. We were forced into these opportunities to become more curious about ourselves, which, you know, personal curiosity always leads to personal um, awareness. And so, yes, I think a lot of people have taken advantage of that of like, wow, you know, I was living on this treadmill for so many years and all of a sudden the treadmill has stopped. What do I really want my life to look like going yeah. forward? Do I do I really want to be this busy? Do I really want my kid playing three sports to where we never have family time anymore? Uh, do I really want to work in this career? Do I really want to work at this company? You know, again, when everything is stripped away from you, there if you allow them, there can be clarifying moments where you have to sit with yourself, you can sit with yourself and go, okay, what do I really want? What do I really need? And I think that has been what this year has been like for a lot of people. And then, you know, if we want to take that a step further, I think the people who have resisted that sitting with themselves, going through the clarification process, being personally curious to lead to personal awareness, I think those people um, are, are feeling it now, you know, yeah. they're, they're feeling the, the rub of that resistance. And at, at some point, the rub of the resistance is going to, is going to get us because, Again, COVID's taken a lot and it's left us us. <laughs> right. It's like you you were, you know, faced to look at the man or woman in the mirror. Right. You know, and uh, one of the things that I, I, I when we the pandemic first started, it was like, man, there's a lot of people who are going to get to do things that they always wanted to do yeah. and never had the chance to do. And, and I'm speaking specifically like I, I saw a news report. It was on YouTube. Uh, but it was like a lot of athletes, a lot of people in Hollywood who were talking about the busyness of life. And like, you know, I'm always on the road three times a week, four times a week, you know, and for football or athletes, it was like, you know, basketball players. We only really get to see our family, you know, for two or three months out of the year because yeah. the other eight or nine we're traveling. And so, again, it just forced you to slow down and say, what is really important in life? Mm -hmm. And I think one of those common things that we all can attest to is family yeah you know and, and when we we saw the numbers going up with the deaths and mm -hmm. you know the infection rate and it was just like does that job like you said does that job really matter mm -hmm. does this really matter and you know so again it was just like we were forced to look in the mirror we were also mm -hmm. forced to assess you know our priorities um and in and, and a good i think that's really good because you know, it made us, it forced us to slow down, mm -hmm. you know, it forced us to slow down and look at like, what's really going on here? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. I know I have so many friends um, that their spouses traveled Monday through Thursday every week. And, mm -hmm. and that's just how their family functioned and how they lived for years. It was kind of all they ever knew. And right. that abruptly stopped. And that has been an interesting thing for those families to readjust to, you know, dad or mom is home all the time. Now. Right. <laughs> but and and you know, there's a little bit of growing pains in that. But yeah, I think it's had a huge impact on on families and family time and how we're going to spend that family time. I, I completely agree with you. Yeah. And you know, just it's just kind of redundant, but you know, it's a good thing. And then at times it's like, all right, you're getting on my nerves. I done seen you, <laughs> you know, it was cool. Like you just said for that instance, it was cool when you were here Monday to Thursday, but now you here seven days a week. Now we getting on each other's nerves. Like, you know, give me some space. I need to go in the other room. Yeah. But, but even in that, it forced us to look at, and like you said, the word you said earlier, set boundaries in our relationships and yeah. say, yes, you know, we're forced to be confined to the house or, you know, we're, we're on lockdown or whatever. But, you know, even in that, we still need to set boundaries because if we don't have those boundaries in place, then 
that's when tension starts to happen. That's when fights and frustration. And it's just like, where do we go from, from this, you know? Mm -hmm. And just from that, that concept, have you seen that to be the issue where it's like one individual is gone and then now all of a sudden we're here and that has caused or been the problem? Yes. I think that's been a lot. I I think that's been a, a big source of conflict for, um, for a lot of couples, you know, and even if you didn't have a spouse who traveled every week, the spouse still left Mm. (laughs) for eight to 10 hours a day. And, you know, and then now they're, now they're here and they're kind of, you know, in your sphere of how you did things during the day, not only are the kids in your sphere of how you did things during the day, but the kid, but your spouse is in the sphere of how you did. And so, yeah, it was just very, unsettling for everyone. Everyone's life and schedule obviously got turned upside down. And I think the, I don't want to say the antidote, but maybe in some ways the antidote to this with couples is learning to state your needs. And Mm -hmm. I think for a lot of couples, that is a struggle for different reasons for different people. I think for a lot of people, we indirectly communicate our needs. Um, so an example of that is, uh, do you do you have anything you do you need to do tonight? I need to work. Mm-hmm. So I just ask you, do you have anything you need to do tonight? And then I told you I need to work, but I didn't. I never stated a need, and right. I never in the in those two sentences I didn't ask for a need to be met. But for a lot of people, they're like, well, clearly I'm saying I need help with the kids and dinner tonight. And so, you know, if you don't do that, you're not respecting your needs. But, you know, that indirect communication, whereas direct communication would be, do you have any plans tonight? I need to work tonight. Can you, you know, be the lead with dinner and putting the kids to bed? Right. Right. You know, I stated, I asked you a question. I stated what was going on with me and I stated and asked for the, for the need. And I think that as simple as that sounds, I think that's actually really hard for a lot of couples because not to gender stereotype, but generally speaking, women communicate indirectly and they, we assume that you knew what I meant. Look. You're preaching to the choir right now. I need to call Destiny in here so she can. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, because because when people communicate indirectly to me, I, I have learned to read between the lines, which is not necessarily a good thing, and to anticipate their need in that statement. And that's, you know, that goes back to a lot of how women are socialized to be nurturers and caretakers. And so there is a lot of anticipation of needs. But with that, we don't communicate our needs directly, whereas men, generally speaking, are socialized to communicate their needs directly. So if you need something, you're probably going to tell me or ask me. And so that communication difference, I think, creates a lot of problems with couples and just learning to, one, identify our needs I need help tonight with the dinner and the kids not feeling guilty about that need. I'm not being a burden. I'm not inconveniencing my spouse. We both had these children. (laughs) They're both ours. And then learning to state the need. And I think also learning to state the need in a way that isn't armoring up. You know, and and I think this goes for for both individuals in the relationship. We can state a need and we can armor up and and kind of what that sounds like is I have a lot to do and I need you to finally participate in our family. Right. Right. And, you know, the the, uh, Beth McCord, because we had her on the show, I think right before we had you last year. Uh uh, And and one of the things that she well, the term that she coined is a suicide, you know, and and basically it is it identifies with everything that you just said. Like, I'm going to say something and I assume that you know what it is that I'm saying. And, you know, and I, and I feel like this kind of goes to the point of uncomplicating love, you know, is if you express yourself yeah. and you, you speak the need that whatever that need is and you articulate, hey, this is what I need in this moment, you know, that could, you know, free up some stuff in you. It's like, hey, I feel loved, you know, and in prime example, I'm just be transparent, like destiny's love language is acts of service, Mm -hmm. you know? And so to your, your point, your example, she might say, Hey, can you do the laundry? Mm -hmm. And it's not saying like, Hey, 
instead of saying, hey, can you do the laundry? Because I just need a break, Mm -hmm. you know, so she can go and recharge and, you know, Mm -hmm. spend that time, uh, you know, her alone time to kind of be better for the family. And Mm -hmm. it's like if you just articulate and say what it is you need, then you can get that self-love and get that time. And, And it's ironic that, you know, this is something that for the last I want to say the last three and a half months, you know, I've been putting out little snippets and this is kind of what I've been talking about, like taking time to lean into self, yeah. you know, spending spending that quality time with yourself, making sure you're mentally stable, mm-hmm. you know, because like you said earlier, hurt people hurt people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, nobody wants to be married or be in a relationship if you're not the best version of yourself, mm-hmm. you know. And so tell me what I can do to help you get to that point. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, you know, that kind of just speaks to what you're doing with uncomplicating love. Yes. Yes. And you know, when you do have that spouse who, who says, you know, tell me what, what I can do to help you be the best version of yourself. It really is incumbent upon us to have that self-awareness of what we need. Because again, I see this a lot with my clients and, and, you know, also with myself of, Sometimes I just feel hot, let's so to so to speak, you know, like my emotions just feel hot. Uh-huh. And if I don't slow down and go, what am I actually feeling in this moment? What do I actually need in this moment? Then I can't communicate it to you. Right. I can't right. communicate it to my spouse. Or maybe I will communicate something, but it's not actually what I need, you know? And so yeah, he unloads the dishwasher, but really I wanted a hug. And so I'm still Mm. feeling resentful. Right. And, you know, and it goes back to what you said earlier. Well, two things. You you need to know yourself. And that's part of that self-discovery. Like you need to know, okay, in this moment, I want you to. And I'm just using your example. I want you to unload the dishwasher. But what I really need is for you to give me a hug and then go and unload the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. But it also goes to the vulnerability piece. If you have spent that time with self, you know, and you, you know, okay, this is what I need, but it says a lot for the person to say, I'm going to be vulnerable in this moment yeah. and say, this is what I need. And sometimes, you know, and this is crazy. Cause I did a, have, are you familiar with clubhouse? Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So I'm on clubhouse and uh, one, one of the rooms that I did on clubhouse, I have a, I have a club uh, called the millennial marriage and relationship advice club. Oh, I love um, that. And one of the topics that we did in the room was, does vulnerability make me a weak man? Ooh. And, you know, a lot of times people see vulnerability as a weakness. Mm-hmm. And in, in essence, it's really a strength because it takes a strong person to say, I'm going to just be naked and unafraid and unashamed to say, I really need a hug right now. Yeah. yeah. You know, and so yeah. but you you have to you have to know, like you said, you have to know what it is you need. And and again, just being transparent, there's been times and Destiny and I is married and it's like, I ask her, Hey, what do you need? And Mm -hmm. she doesn't know. Mm -hmm. And there's been times where she's asked me like, what do you need from me? And it's just like, well, I want you to do X, Y, and Z, but I don't really know what I need. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And so that's that part of self-discovery in this moment. I have this feeling and this is what I need to either overcome that feeling. And, you know, that's just like, it, it goes back to being vulnerable to go talk to somebody, help you rediscover those feelings. And mm-hmm. why do you feel the way you feel? What do you think that's about? What's the root? So mm-hmm. it all comes together. <laughs> it does. It does. And I love that you are speaking out on male vulnerability because, you know, I mean, I obviously, I specialize in working with adult women. So I talk about female vulnerability and what that looks like and our own struggles and hurdles with that. But I tell you, men have absolutely been shortchanged in our world when it comes to vulnerability because they have been fed this basket of lies that vulnerability is not masculine, it is not strong, it is weakness. You need to armor up, you need to be stoic. Mm-hmm. Anger is is powerful, uh, stoicism is powerful. I mean, it's just, you know, it's we have done men such a disservice. And, and I think anyone who can speak out on this truth that vulnerability is strength and male vulnerability is strength and male vulnerability leads to greater connection. It, it actually leads to greater success in yeah. life. It, it is such a, a linchpin and, and just begin to correct these myths and lies that we have fed men about vulnerability. I just, I think that's awesome. It's so needed. 
and and that I'll send you the link because I actually uh, what I started doing because I was having I was having some great great conversations. I was like, man, we need to record these. So I started recording the clubhouse conversations, and that's mm -hmm. one. But you know, a lot of the guys just trying to chimed in, and you could just hear like, this is why I feel vulnerable. I feel mm -hmm. like vulnerability is a a weakness because I was dating somebody and they said this when I opened up, you know, and it's like. And, and that's the scary part, you know, even with, you know, uncomplicating love, because especially I'm just speaking in regards to relationships. Mm -hmm. When I open up to you and you don't know how to handle those feelings. Mm -hmm. And so it, it makes me feel rejected. And mm -hmm. if, I, if I'm in a marriage or a relationship, it's like, OK, well, next time I mm -hmm. just won't tell you how I really feel or what I really need because of a previous experience. And, you know, that's that part of the complicating a marriage, a relationship, love in general. And that could be with a spouse, family members or whomever. Yes, exactly. I don't know if you have um, I don't know if you're as big a fan of Brene Brown as I am. But, you know, she talks a lot about vulnerability and she talks about this piece in particular in relationships in male female relationships. And I first read her thoughts on this several years ago. And I like put down the book because I was like, oh, she just called me out. <laughs> because I do this. And so what she said, and it was, it was really life changing for me. And I have really tried to be aware of it in my marriage. She said, you know, women contribute to keeping men in this box uh, when it comes to vulnerability. And she said, you know, what happens is that we say to the men in our lives, tell me how you're feeling. Tell me how I want to know what's going on with you. Tell me how you're feeling. But then when our men are vulnerable and they are feeling anxious and they admit that anxiety or they're feeling depressed or they're grieving, we don't know what to do with that as women. Because right. we say we want to know what you're feeling, but we don't want you to get up off that that horse, you know. Right. And so what happens is that a lot of women will shut down their man's vulnerability. You know, well, you know, buck up. We got to move on. Buck up, buttercup. You know, yeah. we got we yeah. to keep on keeping on and because we don't because it makes us feel vulnerable to see our man vulnerable. And so we shut it down and it in it. It just keeps us all in a very unhelpful cycle. And I think it really is important that for, you know, as women that we recognize, wow, I am contributing to this. I, I am giving a mixed message of tell me how you feel. Tell me how you feel. But then when you are vulnerable, it makes me feel uncomfortable. And I try to solve you, fix you, shut you down, brush you off. And then what does that do? That sends you the message that oh that well that wasn't a good idea that that turned her off that made her right. comfortable that made her mad I'll just stuff it all stuff it all and it's it's so bad for for everyone in the relationship but I think it's something that you know women we really need to be aware of do we say we want men to be vulnerable but when we see that vulnerability does it make us feel uncomfortable and we don't know what to do with it that's a real growth area I feel like for for women as I call us out. <laughs> on it <laughs> i'm just sitting here and can you do you know the name of the book by Brene brown yes and and freakishly enough i even remember the page numbers she talked about <laughs> so she was really reading your book then <laughs> you know the page <laughs> because because i have read this passage to a lot of clients um but it's in daring greatly it's in her book daring greatly and it's around page like 99, 100. It's in the, the chapter on shame, but it's like 99, 100, 101. It's somewhere in there. She talks about this dynamic between men and women. And um, and it's good because I think she, she absolutely nails what happens in a lot of relationships that's incredibly unproductive and not good for us. I'm definitely I'm gonna link that in the show notes uh, because I know I'm pretty sure it can help. It, I'm gonna want to read it and you know, uh, Anybody that listens to this, it could possibly help them. So yeah. you said it was called Daring Greatly. Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Definitely, definitely gonna to read that. So kind of want to wrap up here. Yeah. So in regards to uncomplicating love, we talked about, you know, the vulnerability. We talked about, you know, leaning into self and you know, self-love and self-worth. Why should our listeners come and participate in uncomplicating love? Because the, the thing that immediately comes to mind is we've been created to love and be loved. And, 
And I think that's a gift that we deserve to receive. And, you know, sometimes that word deserve feels a little uncomfortable for me because I think it we can associate it with entitlement. But but love and relationships, again, how I see it, how I conceive of it, love and relationships are kind of like a gift. Like imagine if I'm handing you a gift right now um, that God has given us, you know, that we can experience love and grace through one another. And when we live armored up, when we live resentful, when we live in in unhealthy patterns, like over accommodating and over functioning that may actually look like love, but they're actually unhealthy. You know, Mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, we're not receiving that gift. We're not we're not allowing ourselves to live in the freedom and the love and the grace that has been intended for us. And so I I see, you know, let's uncomplicate love so that we can experience the joy and the freedom of love so that we can experience love, how it was intended to be life giving and enriching, not something we perform for, not something that we live in fear of losing, Mm -hmm. um, not something that stresses us out or, or we're afraid of, but to live in the joy and the freedom of love and connecting with one another. Wow. I'm, 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 I'm excited. I'm definitely going to join. I'm going to use the code more so I can get $5 yes. off. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, but Maisie, again, as always, it has been a pleasure. And for all of the More Love Nation, make sure you all go and check out www.cultivateatlanta.com. Go to courses, check out Uncomplicating Love, Make sure you use the code MORE, M-O-O-R-E, to receive $5 off of the Uncomplicating Love online course. Also, make sure you go over to uh, Maisie's Instagram. Follow her at Cultivate Atlanta. Uh, she posts a lot of great content. Uh, I've, I see some of your content, and I'm like, oh, this is good. Go ahead, Maisie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank uh, like, you. you know, some of the quotes and stuff, and I'm just like, okay, okay, I see. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, but more love nation this make sure you all like subscribe share this with a family or friend and with that we are out and maybe this is what i always say at the end of every show holler at a player when you see him in the street <laughs> i love it i love it thanks for having me this has all been right. so much fun all right hey.